Hey, yo, YouTube, what's going on? So I wanted to make uh, a video to uh, it's accompanying the article I wrote um, originally on dev.to about uh, the Lambda function to capture thumbnails when uploading a video to AWS using a AWS Lambda function. Uh, there's a whole write-up, but I wanted to add a little bit of visualization so maybe there's something that's unclear that I wrote. So the goal is, this is my fake YouTube site here called FooTube. And when you upload a video, let's upload a real short video here. Um, there's a progress bar and you can track the progress. Uh, but here I add an extra 20 seconds basically for processing. And that's all handled through JavaScript code. And I basically just do a, a countdown. That's giving the Lambda function time to execute um, somewhere else because it takes about 15 seconds. It's pretty reliable once the code is right. And boom, giving it 20 seconds allows to get your, um, your thumbnails here. So you want to get the three thumbnails. That's where they show up. So basically, I have a little piece of state in React that flips over after 20. Once the video is actually the data is uploaded, then I start a 20 second timer. When that 20 second timer expires, boom, I flip a piece of state from you know false to true. And that'll show these URLs since we know the, what the URLs are going to be based on the video we originally sent here from the browser. Of course, uploading a video is another tutorial. There's a lot of uh, information on that out there. So I'm not going to cover that. But boom, we, this is where we get our three thumbnails. And we just made those with our Lambda function. So um, to walk through some of that, the Lambda console uh, on AWS, this is where let's see, the dashboard. Here, here's our dashboard. Um, you know, where you could create a function, you just click it and you want to author from scratch, function name. This is in a Node.js 8.10 runtime. And this is where you make that role that I talked about. And you make those roles in the IM console uh, under the roles tab. You can just create a new role and look for Lambda. And then add, you want to make sure you add uh, and you can search it right here. It's called the AWS uh, Lambda Execute, I believe. So you want to add add that and then continue through the process. That's all you really need to add to uh, the role. And then when you're creating your function, then you'll use an existing role. And that role right here, I call mine Lambda role, uh, that will pop up in this this list when you create your function. Then you have your function created and they give you a dashboard for your function. And you set the triggers up here by adding a trigger, all kinds of different services, but you want to add an S3 trigger. And then this is where you can enter the bucket. You know, it's going to give you a drop down of all your buckets, the event type, which is put, because that's how I upload my video. I use put. From the browser, I upload it, and just just to maybe show a little bit of what I did there, if I can find it in this web of files, um, I use Axios. Um, so here it is, right here. Axios method put, and that's how I send the file up and uh, use Axios's upload progress or on upload progress. to. That's how I know when the progress runs out to start a timer. But I don't want to get too much into that. That's a whole other subject. But this is where you add the prefixes and suffixes um, to make sure your trigger doesn't go off for like the, the JPEG that we save later. And then you want to add the, make sure the Amazon cloud logs are here. Um, that way you can get a lot of uh, console logs from when your function executes. Then this is where you add a layer. Um, 
But first you have to create the layer. So that's back out here in the dashboard. You go to layers, create a layer. And this is where you can upload that zip file um, of FF MPEG and FF Probe. And definitely make sure you add Node.js here to compatible runtime. Um, so once you have that layer created, then back in your function, then you can add that layer. And you'll see I have one layer added. Um, and you can see it's that FFmpeg layer. And it automatically wires in um, to, your, to your function like that. Um, then in buckets, I had to add that line to my bucket where I gave that role get and uh, put object permissions. Um, also, if you go to the properties of the bucket, this is where you can actually, you can even add another, you can add the event on this side of it too. So you'll see I have WebM and MP4, the two events I look for on the user folder. So whenever a WebM is uploaded by put, whenever an MP4 is put there by put, I trigger that Lambda function. So you can see them through your, um, S3 console as well. Um, the cloud watch, if you go to the logs, it basically gives you any console log you do from your Lambda function. So I, I write a note just when I successfully upload something. And I like to look at it. You can toggle it over to text over here. Um, so you can see the different text. So successfully upload, you know, image one, image two, image three. I'm also making a GIF preview. I didn't, I thought there was enough in the article. I didn't want to get into that. Um, that's a whole other thing. Um, but if you get errors when you're doing stuff, let's see if I can find something. Because I got my fair share of errors. So here's an error, like something went wrong. It also gives you the time and the memory used, so you can tailor your function that way. Um, but you know, you can you can definitely console log errors this way. It's helpful. See, I console logged um, process.env, or I think, or no, this was I console log what FF Probe sent back. You know, so you can you can definitely troubleshoot through the the uh, cloud logs and you get metrics in here too. So you can look at all kinds of different metrics by function name, duration, and then see, you know, set a time frame on it to see how long your function took to execute um, at different times, when it was invoked, how many times you've called the function, um, errors. You see, I had a ton of green marks and error. I had a ton of errors just figuring things out, refactoring things. So the cloud logs are, are pretty key. Um, and then in the billing, everything everything I did with Lambda was free, but I, I ended up costing myself whatever, 73 cents or something, because I kept uploading those zip files. And I wasn't making a layer. So it breaks it down for you uh, here. You can see that you get 400,000 uh, seconds of compute time with Lambda. And I haven't even, I've used 0.1% and I've called the Lambda function a lot. Uh, you get a million free requests to Lambda. I've used 0.02%. Um, so the Lambda function itself isn't costing me any money here um, to play around with. What cost me money was data transfer uh, here. And that data transfer was, it had a lot to do with uploading 
the video a million times and uh, watching the videos a million times. So the data transfer is what really got me. But um, that's just a, a, a little bit more detail about how I implemented it and maybe maybe something wasn't clear in the article um, on how to do it. So uh, another thing you can do is actually send post requests. Uh, I didn't really cover this in the article just because I was like, okay, enough is enough. But I'm getting the duration, uh, let's see. With FF Probe, you, I shared that code. I'm getting the duration. I, I said, well, as long as I'm getting the video duration, why don't I send that to my back end so I can save that to my database? So you can do the same thing when the images are created or well, all the images are created. You could send a post request to your back end that then tells your front end, hey, you can get those thumbnails now, you know. So um, here I just send, you can use the. Uh, built-in HTTP module that's built into Node to send uh, some JSON to your back end. And if you get into that, it's a little tricky in development. Um, see here, I just bring in the request module from HTTP, and then I have, you, you pass it some options. I send a post request of JSON, and you have to give it a host name and path. And if you're on localhost, you, you have to do um a little trickery and i use uh what is it called local tunnel yeah, you, you can uh there's a few of these i think ngraph might be one but i use the local tunnel um you can install a global local tunnel and it gives you the lt command on the command line so basically i've got Let's see, here it is. I've got my back end running on my localhost port 8888. So what you can do is you can say you'll have a local tunnel command once you install it. Right? And then you can actually what you can actually do is you, you then say local tunnel dash port 8888. You tell it which port on your local system to stick into and then you can pass it a subdomain or dash s command and you could say something like you know aws lambda endpoint or something like that whatever you want it to be you can set it to that otherwise it's going to give you a random url but now it's aws lambda endpoint dot local tunnel dot me so you know what the URL is going to be. And once you know what that URL is going to be, you can set that URL. Um, I set mine to uh, it's the server host name here in my environment variable. So that's AWS Lambda endpoint dot tunnel dot local tunnel dot me. And then whatever endpoint you want to use on your server, I used API slash Lambda uh, on my server. So now you can get as long as that endpoint's running, on that local tunnel's running, your Lambda function in development can send something to your back end. Um, and that's just a simple, that's just a simple route on your back end. So it's just basically, I use express uh, app.post to API Lambda. Uh, body parser JSON, and then I run this lambda root handler and I just send a status of 200 and then from that I'm sending the duration so I just get the duration and save it to my database so you could do stuff like that from a lambda function I'm not sure you know how great that is it seems like that just adds something that can go wrong but in this type of Lambda function, it's being triggered by an event on your S3 bucket. It's not in direct contact unless you do this. You know, this is the only way to have direct contact uh, with your app if you're invoking a Lambda function like we are. But that's just another added thing, how I save the duration um, 
of the video. So that's a neat little fact. And then down here is where you can set your memory. I've got mine set to 512 megabytes, which is enough. Um, and then there's a bunch of other settings. I'm just, this is literally the first Lambda function I ever wrote. So um, I'm still learning this stuff, but I figured why not put everything into one single article I had to patch this together from, you know, reading reading the crazy AWS documentation, which everyone complains about, but I mean, there's a lot of good stuff there. You just have to read it. And all kinds of forum posts, all kinds of uh, FFmpeg documentation. So, I mean, I really put, I definitely put my time in on this. Um, and I like the fact, you know, the layers, you know, I had to really look into that. Uh, doing it without any node modules just to be able to pop your code into the editor is very convenient for development. So I definitely learned the hard way. So hopefully you can learn the easy way. Anyway, thanks for watching. Peace.